Now, Wang Wa Po and Liang Yi Tai, they were many generations back, and they really existed, these masters. Okay, but then it was said that they transcended their techniques to different students, and one of them was called Liang Zhan or Zhan Xin Sang, which is the grandmaster of the Yitman language. And Liang Zhan taught to Chan Hua Sun, the, the Chen, the Mandi uh, changer. And then Chan Hua Sun taught to Yi Man and other students too. And then like more than 50 years ago with the Chinese Revolution in 1949, a lot of the uh, practitioners in southern China, uh, because of the geographical convenience, they came to Hong Kong, Macau, and elsewhere in Southeast Asia. So at that time, Yip Man went to Hong Kong, and then he started to teach his lineage of uh, Liang Zhan or, or Chen Ma Sun Wing Chun. Also at that time, there were other Wing Chun masters, Shaolin Wing Chun masters like Lao Xiu Wun, Dang Yek, uh, Chu Zhong Man, who also came to Hong Kong. And then at that time, they knew each other, they respected each other because one way or another, they, they had some relationship to each other. Like Tang Ye was the son of Tang Xun, who was called the king of Longpo in Fatsan at that time. And then Lao Xiu Wen was the uh, descendant from the Lao's family, who were famous with the double blades or double sabers. And uh, Grandmaster Zhu Zhong Man, uh, he also came to, actually he went to Macau first, and then he got quite famous in Macau. Then um, he was quite famous for his uh, bare hand combat techniques. So there was um, uh, some sort of arrangement that there was a particular practitioner called Grandmaster Wai Yan, who was at that time my Si Kong for some years because I started to learn Shaolin Wing Chun from Sifu Lao Chi Long, who was then the only student of Grandmaster Wai Yan. Now Grandmaster Wai Yan had a wholesale place selling poultry, like ducks, chickens, in a place in, in Yao Ma Te area in Kowloon of Hong Kong. And then he had the space, he had the time, and he could afford the leisure of spending time and money to invite all the more famous practitioners together so that they could offer the best they could towards the uh, organizing a, a more uniform style of uh, Wing Chun. So at that time, there was like more than 50 years ago, uh, this wholesale place was called Dai Dak Lan. And then uh, Grandmaster Wai Yan invited a few of the famous practitioners together, like uh, Grandmaster Tang Ye, Grandmaster Lao Xiu Wun, Grandmaster Chu Zhong Man, uh, Grandmaster Tang Kong, and Lao Hong Tai, uh, Lao Gai Hong, quite a number of them. So they always gather together, they exchange the knowledge and skills about Shaolin Wing Chun, and then they had a plan to document everything like uh, somebody was going to perform the certain forms, uh, like offering the best of his masterpiece, and then somebody would write it down with drawings and the transcripts for it. So it went on for some years, and then place became known, and then they kept contact with the other masters in other styles, so it was then quite a popular place for, for martial arts. Feng Xiu Cheng was back many, many years ago. Feng Xiu Cheng was the student of Sun Gam or the Dai Fa Ming Gam or the, the, the uh, yeah, Painted Face Gam. Now Painted Face Gam, uh, I heard some stories that he was uh, playing himself as a female role in, in the Chinese opera, which is not true. 
because in Chinese opera, you have different paintings on the face to manifest different characters. Okay, Fa Ming Kang was particularly for Xiu Mo. Xiu Mo means the martial arts role. Okay, so Fa Ming Kang was actually playing the martial arts role in the opera. So he learned it from the ancestors, like. Uh, what we, uh, we call the uh, uh, Xu Xin, uh, and, and then there were Tin Nang and Dao Wa Bo. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with those two, these two names. I only learned it from the past. Uh, OK. Feng Xiu Qing was the student of Fa Ming Kam. OK. And then Feng Xiu Qing taught this to a lot of students, like um, Grandmaster Dang Xun, Grandmaster Dong Jek, and my Si Kong, uh, Grandmaster Chi Xiong Man, was the student of Grandmaster Dong Jek. But then, when I met Grandmaster Chi Xiong Man more than 30 years ago, at that time he was over 70, he told me another story. Uh, it still traces back to his uh, learning from Dong Jek. But there was also um, a period when he went to a place in, in southern China called Qingyun, where he met uh, the Wang's family. Uh, the grandfather was called Wang Jixing, and the grandson's name I don't know. So the, the Wang's grandfather and the grandson, and the story was told by Grandmaster Chu uh, to me face to face that he learned from these two Wong families who learned directly from Chi Xin Sim Si, or Chi Xin the Big Mom. So he said he learned a lot from them. Also, uh, apart from the fighting skills and, form, uh, and forms, he learned also the, uh, the herbal medicines uh, knowledge. So you see, with Great Master Chi's lineage, we have some different forms. But then, when it comes to the last part, it's quite identical to each other. When we come to the wooden dumbbell set, we have now two wooden dumbbell sets forms. One is called the heaven set, one is called the earth set. And so I heard there was a third set called the human set, uh, which uh, I tried to get answers from the elders, and um, they some of them said to me, well, I learned it before, but it's a short form. It's mainly focused on, on the leg work, on the kicks. But uh, they showed me a few movements, but that wasn't satisfactory enough.